This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a non-profit, non-nominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing the proof and existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operations of his eternal purpose, pattern and plan, operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry C. Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year of 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year of 1958. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, Jamaica, Africa, New Mexico, and other foreign countries. The Omaha class, Cottage Meeting, was established in 2016. In this school, we use a true original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which could be contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been a prophet substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been a prophet substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifests in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. 
It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, through the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is a title that the Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it's an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part into any good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, or the Latin language have any letters or characters in their alphabets or produce sound that is made by this letter J. And neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. So such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible winners of the true and original name of the Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Now, Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He really chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn a cloud all around the edge of this chart to show that how everything on this chart is within a cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within this pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now Yahweh knowing that man cannot receive of him in this pure spirit state. He took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the world of sun, a super and corporal being that is having the shape and form of a man but without flesh and blood. And this form could only be seen in divine visions and understood and divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifests himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua Messiah, who the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given until salvation, and we must know that name. So a simple yet intelligent question you should ask yourself is what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title can be had by reading a preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern of the universe because it's Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses on top of Mount Sinai and showed him a tabernacle pattern in the vision and instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of the most holy place, the holy place, and the court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. Also in this school, we show proof how that everything is made and operates according to this threefold tabernacle pattern, and absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Our ten primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. One, to help you find no Yahweh or Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Two, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua Messiah without distinction of nationality, race, creed, caste, sex, or color. Three, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and powers latent in men. Four, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, modern and practical court science. Five, to escapade current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operations of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation of ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, Satan, and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered to the sons and children of Yahweh. Nine, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby men can be saved. 
and, ten, and, and seven in the name of Yahshua Messiah, excuse me. And ten, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the New York State. Our watchword is peace. Our slogan is speak the truth. We will start our class off this evening with the opening prayer, which will be given by Sister Rapunzel Williams. And our scripture lesson for this evening is Psalms, the 96th Division, and that will be read by Dr. Stephon Williams. Let us all remain seated for the opening prayer. Good day once again, class. Good day. I'd like to ask the class to uh, let's give honor to Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua Messiah. Father, we'd like to thank you for bringing us back again to learn more of your purpose, your pattern, your plan. I'd like to thank you for um, uh, for life, health, and strength today. Um, I'd like to ask you, Father, this uh, class go out to abroad may it be a uh, encouragement to someone. Uh, also, ask you, Father, to open up our eyes and hearts and minds to receive whatever that is. All these things we ask in Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good day again, the class. Good day. We have no returning visitors or no first time visitors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like to say great day to the class. Great day. Our scripture lesson for today's class is Psalms, the 96th Division. And I'll be reading it from the Holy Bible reference containing the Old and New Testaments translated out of the original tongues and with the former translations diligently compared and revised by His Majesty Special Command. It says, Words of Christ printed in red letter center column references authorized King James Version um, Zondervan Grand Rapids Michigan 49530 that song the 96th division from the King James Version of the Bible I will be uncertain the true and correct name of the Heavenly Father his divine title and, um, and the name of the Savior where need be Psalm the ninth Street Division from the King James Version of the Bible. It says, O sing unto Yahweh a new song, sing unto Yahweh all the earth. Sing unto Yahweh, bless his name, show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heavens, excuse me, declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. For Yahweh is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but Yahweh made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto Yahweh, O ye kindreds of the people, give unto Yahweh glory and strength. Give unto Yahweh the glory due unto his name. Bring an offspring and come into his courts. Excuse me. Give unto Yahweh the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O oh, worship Yahweh in the beauty of his holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Say among the heathen that Yahweh reigneth. The world also shall be established, that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. Let the heavens rejoice, and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar, and the fullness thereof. Let the field be joyful in all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice before Yahweh for he cometh for he cometh to judge the earth he shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth I did read for you 
Psalm the ninth street division from the King James Version of the Bible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good day again, class. Good day. It's a, uh, uh, I'd like to remind the class, please, to silence all cell phones and all electronic devices. Thank you. It's an honor and pleasure to call on our speaker for this evening class, Dr. Stephon Williams. Dr. Williams. I'd like to say great day to everyone. Great Once day. again, I'd like to say also say great day to those that are viewing this video. Yes. Especially those that are viewing this video for the very first time. I'd like to say great day to you. Today is Friday, and, and, and every Friday, Yahweh willing, is called our workshop, and, and we have entitled our workshop Transcript Fridays. And we'll be reading transcripts in their entirety every Friday, Yahweh willing. Yes. So the, this, this, this evening's uh, transcript we'll be reading, it is entitled Jehovah and Other Erroneous Doctrine, lecture given by Dr. Kinley on November 20th, 1994 in Los Angeles, California. Once again, the name of the transcript we're going, to, we're going to be reading in its entirety is entitled Jehovah and Other Erroneous Doctrines. Lecture given by Dr. Kinley on November 20th, 1974 in Los Angeles, California. Once again, this is our uh, Transcript Friday's workshop. All right? All right. So uh, let's get into it. says this Wednesday night class we try to conduct it in a little bit different than we do the other classes in this respect we like to teach first and then give you some time to ask questions about the teaching now I'm sorry that I have to tell you this but the truth is right in the book we don't have any meetings unless we tell you about the true names. The Godhead, also called as part of nature, <clears throat> and the Father and the Creator of this universe. We just don't have no meetings without doing it. Now these names are in the dictionary. They've been in there all the time, but we just haven't made no particular study of it the average person preaching and teaching and consequently they have taken the King James Version of the Bible and used the terms Lord God and Jesus Christ and that's as much as the majority of the people know in particular and then the American Revised Version I believe it is used Jehovah and now you know we are living right down in the end of this age well, the age had already ended in 1960. But just like it was in the days of Noah, Yahweh had 120 years that we might call a probationary period while the ark was in preparing. But so far as Yahweh was concerned, the end had come when he told Noah to build an ark. He said the end of all flesh has come unto him. If you want to read it, I'll let you read it. You better read because oftentimes people think that you're trying to put something off on them, but now that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to get around of telling, of, excuse me, we're trying to get around to letting you know what the truth about this whole situation is. And I want to say this while I'm after it. Now here's a book that was written by A.B. Trainer said that God, deity of the nations, all the gods of the nation or Gentiles, all the gods of the nation are idols. Psalms 96 division and verse 5. A.B. Trainer 
is a is a Italian Jew. And what he's referenced to, he referenced to the um, the Holy Name Bible, mm -hmm. which was revised by the late A.B. Trayman. That's the Bible that we use in this class. We also use the King James Bible primarily and the Holy Name Bible primarily. So that's what we're referring to. Okay. okay, the Holy Name Bible. Okay. He says, A.B. Trayman is an Italian Jew. He was versed in Hebrew language. He knew the names and he wrote this book that we have here. It's authentic. It's genuine. So far as the names is concerned, let me just show a few in the audience because they might not okay. have seen that before. Just have me the Bible right there. Oh, I'll, I'll use it right here. This is the Bible that he's referring to in this lecture, the Holy Name Bible. And I'll show it right here. It says the Holy Name Bible contain the old the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments critically compared by ancient authorities in various manuscripts revived by the late A. B. Trainer. That's what we refer to A. B. Trainer. Okay. It was credited for um, for having the uh, Holy Name Bible. Okay. Uh, Okay, revise and put the true and correct name back in the book. Okay? All right. It says, A. B. Trainer is an Italian Jew. He was versed in Hebrew language. He knew the names that he wrote this book that we have here is authentic. It's genuine. So far as the name is concerned, we recognize the fact that it does that it does have some errors and mistakes in it and you don't have any Bible that don't have irrespective in regard who they are writing who they are written by so in other words all Bibles have mistakes okay. but the but the um, but the most important point is that you have the that you have the true correct name of your Heavenly Father the divine title in the, in, the, in the title of the, the true word, the true name of the Holy Spirit, or the true name of the Savior, in in your Bible, okay, okay. that makes the Bible uh, that more clear. All right. Okay. Is it now? We're not down here to have no fun, and we're not down here trying to agree with anybody either. That isn't that isn't our purpose to agree with anybody. You will shortly be called to give an account for the deeds done while you're at home in your body, in your body. It's Yahweh's job to give you somebody that does know that's his responsibility. When he created this universe, he made everything as it was to abolish your and mine excuse for ignorance and colossal stupidity. I'd like for you to read, do you have it? Genesis the sixth chapter 13 verse. Now you pay attention to this. And Elohim said unto Noah, and Elohim said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me. That's right, read on. For the earth is filled with violence through them. Mm -hmm. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Mm -hmm. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Now you see that? Now he's telling him the end has already come so far as he's concerned. You see that now. Now you prepare an ark. Now the point I was trying to make there is trying to show you that the end, so far as Yahweh was concerned, was already come before ever before Noah ever started on the ark. Now I told you 1960 was the end, and you've been on an extended probationary period for 14 years. So this transcript is in 19, 1994. Mm -hmm. And uh, just follow me. <clears throat> in order our dispensation chart here, dispensation age chart, you would notice it comes all the way down. It got the numbers coming down here. All right? Mm -hmm. And you have and right, right at the end, down at the bottom, it says four times 490 equals 1960, okay? okay? 
That's when the age, the present kingdom age, that came, came to an end. All right. Mm -hmm. And he said, now, this is the this is the um, the ark that Yahweh uh, gave uh, divine specification by divine vision mm -hmm. to Noah, right, mm -hmm. to build this ark, right. Mm -hmm. But he said to know that, that, that the end of all flesh already come to Yahweh. See, the age had already ended in concern to Yahweh, you know, mm -hmm. before Yahweh was concerned, right? Mm -hmm. The end of this age that we reside in, as far as Yahweh is concerned, is already ended, all right? Mm -hmm. But we are on an extended probationary period, right? To get our house in order, right? The souls still be saved with Yahweh saving souls, right? right? We don't know who we saved. All right, and whose souls he destroyed. We don't know that, right? Okay. But we still are in a probationary period. In reality, the end of this fourth age, present kingdom age, 56th dispensation, has come to an end. All right? Okay. As far as Yahweh is concerned, all right? It says, Now, I told you 1960 was the end, and you've been on an extended probationary period for 14 years. Now you might as well know how I get those calculations like that. I don't have the time to go into all those details, but we did write a book. And we explained all of those details and things in the book. All right? Okay. Let me just, because uh, like I say, it could be someone viewing this video for the very first time. Okay. What book is he talking about? He's talking about this book right here, which is our, which is our textbook. It's entitled Elohim, the Archetype Original Pattern of the Universe, Volumes 1, 2, 3, and 4, all right? Mm -hmm. That's the book he's referring to, okay? And it says, <clears throat> So now, getting back to this A.B. train of being an Italian Jew, he writes here and tells you about the true names and where the erroneous names and all come from that you have in your King James Bible, in the Bible. Now here's the thing that's so important about it. Now in the Ten Commandments, they have written up there that Pharaoh was not drowned in the Red Sea, and then he went back after his host was drowned in the Red Sea, and took his son, his, his, uh, he's the firstborn of man and beast. When that destroying angel slew him that didn't have that blood over the doors and on each side of the lentils of each side of the doorpost was destroyed or was died and showed that uh, showed Pharaoh went back and took his son and took and laid him in the arms of Moloch, an idol. Now when you stop and think about the many people, the very best that you can find on earth to help him to write that, what they call the Ten Commandments, the very best among the theologians, as it is called, or those that was acquainted with the Bible. Now, that's, that's the kind of mess they made. They say that Pharaoh wasn't drowned in the Red Sea. If that is, is, is that way in the Ten Commandments picture, and he went back. Pharaoh went back and took his son and laid him in the arms of Moloch. Moloch was an idol deity. Now I want to repeat that and I want you to bear that in mind so you can catch on to what I'm talking about now. Now Moloch was not an Egyptian deity. Moloch was a, Can a Canaanite deity. And Solomon built Moloch a temple. Now there's them smart men, Psalms 136 division, verse 14 and 15. I want you to see it now. They said that he wasn't drowned in the, in the Red Sea, and they showed what he did. They didn't even know that Moloch was a Canaanite deity, and Pharaoh definitely was drowned in the Red Sea. Now that's the way that it is, but millions on top of millions of people don't know no better. And when you tell them something that they have never heard before, then they're all up and say, that man don't know 
what he's talking about. Now, I make it my business to gather up all kinds of books and we've got many thousand dollars worth of books in this school and a extensive library by the smartest there is in this world, Roman Catholics, Protestants, Orthodox Jews, and every other kind of thing that you think of, Jehovah Witness. We got all we, we got all of their books. And whenever, whenever we tell you something, we're prepared to prove it. You got me over here? You got me over here? It says, now, I don't draw no salary in this school. I never have drawn one. This school is 43 years old. There never would have been a school in the first place, and I can say that since I'm the founder of it, there never would have been a school in the first place if they would let us teach as the scriptures say. Now, anybody with any common horse sense and apply that horse sense, mother wit that you have, you ought to know that we didn't pay any attention. If my father, if my name is Kimley, if that was, if that is my name, you know what my father's name is. Then why is it that you can't see? It just don't make sense and you know it don't for you around talking about the Lord God and Jesus Christ, the Son of God and the, and the Lord. Got Lord's many every which way. Now I I miss bringing a Roman Catholic Bible tonight, but we've got three or four of them there in the case, and they've got the name Yahweh in there. They say that Yahweh is correct and right. We brought these books down here before, and we did this through. This is the 43rd year of this school, going on the 44th year, and we carry in our classroom books, just a whole library, encyclopedias, many volumes of them, and Bible dictionaries, and every other thing. Follow? And whenever we tell you something, that's the way it is. Now, plus the fact, now I used to be, I haven't, I haven't forgot about Psalms 136 Division. I haven't forgot it, forgot it at all, so I don't want you to think I forgot it, and I'm not going to misread it to you, but I just want to show you that the Bible does say definitely in plain words that any idiot can't understand that Pharaoh definitely was drowned in the Red Sea, and he would have to be. Why did I, why would I say that? The scriptures can't be broken. Dr. Harris, maybe you better read that. To him which divide the Red Sea into parts for his mercy endures forever and made Israel to pass through the midst of it for his mercy endure forever but overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea. Now I'm going to use the total illustration. What he's speaking about, we have down here on this chart the Israelites in, in Pharaoh in Egypt, right? Mm -hmm. And we have right here, it says the Red Sea, all right? Mm -hmm. So we understand what took place here, right? So with the Red Sea, it said that Pharaoh and his host were drowned in the Red Sea, right? Right. All right. So now, is that plain enough for you? I want to know, is that plain enough for you? The student body says, right. Now, you can just be a touch stupid and understand that. See that now? Now you just stop and think about $20 million spent making Ten Commandments and this man, Dr. Gross, your president, wrote to Cecil B. DeMille, uh, DeMille. they had a, a silent movie picture of Ten Commandments and we found out that he was contemplating on making the new talking commandments, making a new Ten Commandments, the talking picture. And Dr. Gross wrote, we have the letters at home. 
and asked him if I could be on his staff. Wrote back and said he was filled up. Now, if you have access to the book, the comprehensive outline of the Ten Commandments and all, you get the names of those great theologians that helped him to write that book. He gathered them up, the best that he could find everywhere, and paid paid them a quite an awful lot of money to write those books. Now you find here that Pharaoh was drowned in the Red Sea. Is that right? It says that. Now if you go over there in Exodus and read about it over there in Exodus, then it doesn't, it don't just speak that plain and so then they just thought they could get by with it. Well now, that's not the way we do things here. Now, I would have to go through all of that uh, rigor mortis. I could. I could show you how to get in it, and you could help yourself even without reading the 150th division of Psalms. Let me show you how, how you do that. Let me show you how you can do that. First, this man, Adam was taken from the dust in the bowels and woman of Mother Earth. That's when he, he, he come, that's where he come from. So when he disobeyed, when he, when he disobeyed, he was put back in the ground from whence he came. Is that right? Now do you see that? Now then coming on down to the flood, it's more pronounced on that big chart down there. We do everything that we can possibly do to show you how it works well. Now Adam, he was buried, he died. He had to, had to die, and you have to line everything up by this pattern. This is the pattern here. This is what he's talking about. This is the pattern here. This tabernacle pattern, the pattern here. You have to line everything up by that. You got the blood here, and you got water there. Okay. He says. Now that means this, that you have to come on back here in pure spirit. I'm going to use it right here, okay, I'll stay right here. It says pure spirit, right? Mm -hmm. He says now, that means this, that you have to come on back here in pure spirit and, and line up everything right through the creation and you have to keep it that way. Never digress or de deviate from it. If you do, you're wrong. Right straight on down, right straight on down. Doesn't make any difference where you go all down there look 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 at that chart down there it's made just that way now this is what we have done we have taken your body i'm talking about the, the whole of it every bit of it left out nothing and put it together in such a way that you can tell that yahweh does exist okay mm -hmm. so you see on this chart here Names that the true correct name of Heavenly Father Yahweh. His true divine title is Elohim. The true name of the of, of the Holy Spirit or Yahshua the Savior. Of the true name of the, of the Holy Spirit or the name of the Savior Yahshua. Okay. Mm -hmm. The true and correct holy divine names up here in title. Right. Right. At the bottom you have erroneous Lord for uh, substitute for, for Yahweh. Jehovah substitute for Yahweh. God is a substitute for Elohim. Jesus is a substitute for Yahshua, okay? Mm -hmm. And Christ is a title just like Lord and God. So down, all down here at the bottom is erroneous names and titles for our Heavenly Father and our Savior, all right? Mm -hmm. It says now, he said, I'm talking about the whole of it, every bit of it, left out nothing and Put it together in such a way that you can tell that Yahweh does exist. Everything he made, he made it to abolish your excuse for, for not knowing him as he is. Now, there's something else I should tell you before we move from here. Yahweh created the devil. Now we have right over here, pictorial illustration. All right, on this chart here, it says, Father, it says, 666, Father of Lies, Okay. Mm -hmm. It has um, death on the head here. It says Satan, Lucifer, or the devil. See how they go? Mm -hmm. All right. Son of perdition. All right. He said, now, Yahweh created the devil. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Now he's not really Yahweh's adversary, he's yours. Now he, the, the job he made him for to do, Satan is doing a good job of that. Now you just should give him credit for that. And just like Yahshua Messiah said, he said that the scriptures cannot be broken. Now that's the thing we need to learn. The scriptures cannot be broken, and therefore Judas, he could do, he could, couldn't do anything different than different the way that he done, and neither could the Messiah do anything any different than what he, he done, because the scriptures just couldn't be broken. He said the Messiah had to go away as it is written of him, and Judas had to go go the way written of him. One didn't have no more of a way of getting out of it than the other one did. And Yahshua said that the scriptures, that all that the Father had given him, he kept but the son of perdition. None, of, none, of, none is law but the son of perdition. What's that for? That the scriptures might be instituted? He says no. Now the devil, the devil right here, and also is called the son of perdition, right? Mm -hmm. Now the devil, this is what he's done to you folks. You not knowing and eager to do right and listening to your ministers. You try to do what they told you and taught you to do. All right? Mm -hmm. Taught you to do. I I done the same thing. So I'm no I'm I'm no different than what you are so as far as that part of it is concerned. I did that which I knew, or at least I thought what, what, what was right. But now I want to show you that Yahweh, and we want to watch to see now this thing, I'm, I'm going to try my best tonight to show you just what's going on. Dr. Harris, Romans, first chapter, verse 19 to 20, one more time. Because that which me, because that which may be known of Yahweh, now listen, you can know something about Yahweh. Now, he's going to tell you why pretty soon. You, you can know. Now, he didn't say believe or feel like. He said that which may be known of Yahweh, read on, is manifest in them. It's manifested in, those, in these people right here, the Jew. Man was made in the likeness and image of Elohim. Listen, he made it that way so that you could have no excuse Say, well, I don't know. It abolished your excuse right there. You see that now? All right, read on. See right here. So uh, this is the chart right here. It says, man made in the image of Elohim by the, par by the pattern of the tabernacle. It says tabernacle pattern, mm -hmm. tabernacle of man, yeah. man by the pattern. All right? All right? All right. So we won't have no excuse. For Yahweh has showed it unto them. Now you see, Yahweh has showed it unto them. That is to say, He has revealed it unto them. All, all right, now I'll read on. For the invisible things of Him. Now, that for is a is a conjunction that joins together a complete thought. Now, since you read that, I have a statement to make right here. I told you I was not. I never have been on no salary. We haven't had no teachers in this school that's ever been on a salary. There never has had one, and we don't expect to have one. See that? So now I. Even if I was on a salary, and since I am not on no salary, I'm not paid to get up here and lie to you. And I, and he said, I ain't afraid to tell you the truth. There's something else about, about that. 43 years that I've been called, excuse me, 43 years that I've been cussed out and beat up, bodily beat up by the black Muslims. Says 906 Hopkins Street in Cincinnati, Ohio. Bad. 
as I've been beat up and mistreated by my own relatives and some. If I had not seen a vision and had a revelation, I'll look every one, I'll, I'll look every last one of you straight in the face and tell you every and, and tell you every last one of you go to hell. I wouldn't fool with it. I wouldn't even been here tonight as bad as I felt, being questionable with me whether I would be able to come to school tonight or not. But I knew that knew that new people would come here and most particular at this time, so I scrambled on out and I come down here. Now, if I told you that Yahweh gave me a vision and revealed it to me just like he did to the rest of the apostles and Moses and them and John and them, and now I'm under no obligation to stand up here and lie to you, and then I want you to know this too. Yahshua Messiah said this, now, if I don't do the works of him that sent me, don't you believe it? Now, my story is this. If I don't do better than your Pope and your Orthodox Jew, Jehovah Witnesses, and the other Protestants, if I don't do no better than they do, and if I can't do the works that no other man can do, then don't you believe me? Now, that ought to be fair, hadn't it? That ought to, that ought to be fair. Wouldn't you think so? Student body said, yes. Yahshua the Messiah went around and preached in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Sanhedrin council. Said through Nicodemus, said, Master, we know you are a teacher come from Yahweh. How did you know it? No man can do the miracle that you do except Yahweh be with him. Yahweh's got to be right in him, cause no man can do the miracle that you do except Yahweh be with him. Now, I want to tell you this, folks. People have gotten out of wheelchairs this year. I haven't concerned myself too much through the years. Of course, it's followed all the way down. Whenever the occasion arrives, people have gotten out of wheelchairs, crippled up, bones broken up. You looked at them, Dr. Harris. Dr. Harris said, right, right. You've seen them too, haven't you? Uh, man number one says, right. Haven't you seen them too? Haven't you seen them, Sister Mary? Dr. Mary Gross said, that's right. Right in Springfield, Ohio, and other places around, even Dr. Harris' own patients. Dr. Harris says, right. He said he had to die. Is that, is that right, Dr. Harris says? That's correct. His wife was sitting back there too, Sister Farley. Sister Farley says, yes, sir. Would you stand up and let folks see you? Now, that's her husband that I'm, that I'm talking about. And your uncle, Dr. Harris says, right. Is that right? Thanks, Sister Farley. Now, that man had cancer. Dr. Robert Harris says, right. Now, listen. I can't heal nobody. Now, I told you plain, Yashin on the side said, I can of my own self do nothing. My father in me, he doeth the works, not me. I can't even heal my own self. Now, how am I going to heal you? Now, where did that come? That come clean with it. I don't have a thing to do no bullshit about, not a thing. You got more of a right to be bullshit and blowing than I have. Because I've seen, it isn't by faith, I've seen. Student body says, right. That's right. I look right at it. Right at it and put it down on these charts. And there ain't never been nobody here. And there never will, will be. I'll tell you that now. There ain't never going to be nobody here able to dispute these things, these charts. Okay, so that's what you see. That's what you see the toilet paper before you, mm -hmm. right? Is these charts, right? Right. The divine vision come by divine revelation given to our founder in the year 1931, right? Okay. He says, "Yes, we had them to try to get up here and and criticize, all right?" He says something by saying, "Well, this ain't 
this ain't right. And he said something, well, well, look, now, you know good and well there's a top on this tabernacle. You see it up there. We know that too. You see that. We know there's a top on it, but no, the devil wants, just want to find something he, he, he can't complain about. And then not only that, you see how these things are drawn in, in, in here? That's not right. This needs to be drawn around here like this. This is wrong. We know all of that. I can find more wrong with it than anybody in the place. And 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 that ain't that ain't all of it. We wrote a book. And there's no less than 175 errors in that book. Sabotage. Is that right? <laughs> we see some somebody to sabotage we want to say the devil we don't, we don't say who, who sabotaged our textbook. Right. He said he said there's, there's 175 errors in, in that in our textbook. He said it's been sabotaged, right? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Student body said that's right. He said now, on purpose. See. Now what you're dealing with, folks, is a harsh thing. You're dealing with something hard, something the devil just nasty would not come clean with you. He's 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 just bound to get up here and lie to you. Yahshua Messiah said, many false prophets, 24th chapter of Matthew, 21st chapter of Luke, 13th chapter of Mark, Jude and Peter and James, all of them say it's so. Prophets, many false prophets would come, said, broad is the way that leads unto destruction. Narrow is the way that leads unto life. Look at this chart right here, see. The way of truth and the life narrow be leading to life, right? Okay. It's all all our, our series wide leads to destruction, is that right? I mean the religious world, is that right? Right. All them lies, okay. It says uh, yeah, he says, in just a few that find it, and you just still go right on, right on, and you think that Yahweh is gonna forgive you for your stupidity. Now he ain't thinking about doing nothing like that. He's going to give you somebody to tell you the truth and then send you to the lake if you don't hear it. A lot of people think, well, I ain't going to the lake. To no lake. Yes, you are. <laughs> you either disobey Yahweh, you either obey Yahweh or go to the lake. You hear what he's saying? Mm -hmm. He don't. You don't care nothing about what color you are and how much money you got and your friends and relatives and associates. He don't care a thing about it, no indeed. Now I'm just, I'm not coding it. Now I'm, I just have to be plain. Now you can hold on to Reverend's hand <laughs> and Reverend has a wrong meaning as two left shoes and you're going on to heaven anyhow. Say you can't. Now that's all wrong, folks. So now, repeat here. It says, because that which may be known of Yahweh, because that which be which may be because that which may be known known of Yahweh, is manifest in them. Is manifest in them, for Yahweh has shown it unto them. Now look, Yahweh has revealed it to them. Yahweh revealed these things to Enoch and Moses and the prophets. He revealed it to them. But here's what they wrote down here. He revealed it to, to them. And now, look here, folks. I would I would like for you to know this. When Yahshua Messiah came in through the loins of, of a woman, he followed, right? Isn't that in the book, the prophets? I mean, he didn't digress or deviate from the law. I mean, he followed that now. You know by that you're going to have to listen and you're going to have to obey. How about that? Is that right? Is that all right? He says, all right, read on, Dr. Harris. For the invisible things of him. Now, wait just a minute. Now, nobody has never seen Yahweh in his fullness. Nobody, somebody said, what did you say that for? You can't get outside and look back and say, that's him over there. Now, he was manifest in his son, all the Yahweh there was. You can see him demonstrated and manifest in his son. And we should see him in one another. You see that? 
For in him that we live and move and we have our being. That's the 17th chapter of Acts of the Apostles. And not only that, we are the offspring of Yahweh. Now, if we're going to be the offspring of Yahweh, then we would be a son or a daughter of Yahweh, not a Christian. If you please, not a Protestant, not a Mohammedan, not a Baptist. You follow what I'm, what I'm saying? All right. says you can just go ahead right on with what you whatever you want to do just sell on with it but I'm telling you now it's my indispensable duty to tell you you you'll be lost with it that's right that's what it is it's not a Christian Christianity is a failure and for you to be worshiping for you to be worshiping the Lord God and Jesus Christ is just as bad as worshiping Moloch that's a Canaanite deity Baal Jehovah now that that sounds bad what makes it sound so bad is because we've been rooted and grounded in all that all all of our lives and somebody come up and tell us something like that and without a study and being real careful get you all warm in the collar you're liable to mash somebody in the mouth about that the devil's the devil the devil will make you knock somebody down and tell you just believing in the Lord God and Jesus Christ you're going to get warm about it fight mad to it. ain't that right it said mm-hmm mm-hmm for the invisible things of him. Okay. I showed you Yahweh is invisible. So I'm just going to put over here real quick so you and your eyes might don't, don't understand what he said. See right here it says Yahweh is spirit, mm -hmm. substance, essence, formless. It is on its ultimate state of existence, is aspect state of existence, right? Mm -hmm. You can't see him in his ultimate state, all right? That's what he's referring to, okay. right? He has three states of existence, mm -hmm. two manifestations of himself, but his ultimate state of existence. He cannot be seen, he cannot be detected, mm -hmm. he cannot be discerned, all right? He cannot be comprehended, all right? Okay. That's what he's referring to, okay? So now, get back in the back to, uh, to the point here. He says, okay, I showed you Yahweh is invisible. For the invisible things of him, watch where this is going to now. Watch so you can see where we're coming down, which the Pope can't do. Orthodox uh, Judaism or conservative Judaism, Protestantism. Listen, folks, let's get this one straight now. Never forget Nobody on earth can tell you anything about Yahweh but Yahweh himself because he's the only one that knows and consequently he's the only one that can tell you. Is that something? That's right. Now you stick to that. Don't you let nobody pull you off of it because that's the way it is, all right? For the invisible things of Yahweh now, watch now where we're going to read from the creation of the world. Now we got it from the creation of the world. See how far back we went with it? From the creation of the world. The invisible things of Yahweh from the creation of the world, what about it, are clearly seen. Now you see, you can see it clearly. <laughs> David would mind, David, would you mind standing up and facing this audience? This is a man. Yahweh made this man in his own like this image, what did he do that for? So that you don't have no excuse for the things that come around and say, well, I don't know how he was. I didn't understand nothing about it. There goes your alibi out, out of the window. I mean internally and externally. Every cell, every tissue, every sinew that it takes to make up this man's body, Yahweh made him just like that so that he 
wouldn't have no excuse. That is to say, man is made in the likeness and image of Yahweh. Well now, somebody might say, well, look, if this was, if this was Adam and Eve, was in him, he's not pregnant with the woman. No, this, the man has female hormones in his body too. For your information, that's what we have right here on this chart right here, see. And it's right here, see what it says? The hormones, right? Mm -hmm. Man, have a, man, the dominant hormone in the man is, is androgen, right? Right. And androgen, A for Adam. But, but but man man also has estrogen inside of him also, but it's but it's lesser. Mm -hmm. So the woman has the dominant chromosome in her mm -hmm. is estrogen. She's has androgen, but it's not more than she has an estrogen. Okay, mm -hmm. and the estrogen and the E, the E for estrogen is the E for E. So I go. Mm -hmm. So it's masculine and feminine within ourselves, right? The type of shadows to show that Yahweh. Is masculine and feminine in himself, is that right? Mm -hmm. In principle, see how I go? So truly man was made in the image of Elohim by the pattern of the tabernacle, see how I go? Mm -hmm. All right. So now, he says now, well now somebody might say, well, look, if this was if this was Adam and Eve was in him, he's not pregnant with the woman. No, this the man has female hormones in his body too. For your information, and the woman she has masculine horm hormones in her body too. So I just this yeah, yeah, we sure did. All right. Thank you, David. Now Yahweh made the thing that way so that you and I could not could that you and I could look right straight at him and our excuses would be abolished. Now, right recently, what we have done is this. There's a sun in the sky out there. It does what we call rise in the east and sets in the west. It did that this morning. It's been doing that ever since. How about that? What's that for? That the sun in the, in the ethereal heaven to point out the son of Yahweh or Adam here. I didn't see that beautiful right there. Mm -hmm. It says to point out Yahweh or Adam here. See how it goes? Mm -hmm. Now, if we get understood that Yahweh made the sun to rise, then we would know that his son Yahshua Messiah would rise from the dead and he is sitting in a vision or a cloud. So, let me use a big toilet illustration right here. We have on this chart here. It said the generation in the first Adam, that right? Mm -hmm. So you got Adam and Eve here in the garden. You got to explain that Eve was inside of Adam, showing showing in type of shadow that Yahweh is masculine and feminine within himself, right? Mm -hmm. So to draw the woman out, is that right? Right. So I go showing Yahweh is masculine and feminine within himself. But we but we put on on is this. Say the generation of the first Adam, which is a type of Yahshua, right? Mm -hmm. So as so as they uh, were, were kicked out of the garden. So you see, when they're coming out, they're driven out by the archangel Michael, mm -hmm. the flame is sword there, right? There's Adam and Eve and the serpent, right? And you see the sun coming down. See how I go? Yes. Some are going, the sun is going down as Adam and them is being driven out, right? All right, come on down, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's that sun, that sun set. Mm -hmm. See how I go? You come down here, Josh was now you got Josh on the cross. Mm -hmm. Being crucified, mm -hmm. you're going to lay, going to lay in Joseph's new tomb, right? Mm -hmm. See, it's the sun right here. And when the resurrect, you see that sun start to come up? Mm -hmm. That sun rise, side I go. <laughs> and the sun right here, side I go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Ain't that so? That's a beautiful stuff, boy. Look, you say, look. Yash Messiah will rise from the dead and he is sitting in a vision or on a cloud. Mm-hmm. Right there, right there, the cloud, right there. This is a vision meeting. This is, it's all visions, right? This is this visions. Yah Yahweh contact man by the mind visions, right? Mm -hmm. And the cloud. The supercorporeal body, not no flesh and blood, right? He says, he is sitting in a vision or or, or a cloud, listen 
and then he sat down. Now that sunrise, sun ascended and reached his zenith, and sun sat down at the right hand of the Father. What's that all about? So that you won't have no excuse, then somebody, or there's somebody around there telling lies about it, preaches well. The disciples come and stole him out of the tomb. Every morning the sun is rising faithfully and sets. You guess something? <laughs> sets. The, the, the sun rise. The sun is rising faithfully. Faithfully it sets down. That's a lie. It said, "Look, look. They couldn't. You can't see that the sun in the sky called. That's too hot to handle." One out there in Joseph knew too. They work together. Now this is what Jehovah, Ambassador Collins said, Ambassador Collins said that Yahshua Messiah, Jesus Christ they call him, said he rose from the dead Saturday afternoon. I've got to question, I've got to question that. Did anybody in this building ever see the sun rise in the afternoon of any day? <laughs> Somebody said, no, no. Well, he said, he said, when you don't know what it's all about, you make such colossal blunders. You don't know why these things are as they are. Then you just make all kinds of blunders. Now, Sabbath means rest. Now, if Yahshua, the Messiah, was fulfilling as he said he was doing, when he was laid to rest in Joseph's new tomb, if he rose from the dead on the Sabbath day, then he would have broke the rest. See? Mm -hmm. You too stupid to see that. So it's right up here on this total illustration right here. You see right here. Got him, got him, got him, got him in the tomb there, right? Mm -hmm. It says Saturday, Sabbath, Sabbath means rest, right? right? He resurrects it early Sunday morning. It says Sunday, three on your part of the day. See how they go? Mm -hmm. All right, <laughs> right there. Okay. It says. Um, See, you're too stupid to see that. He see every error you can make. You see that now Yahweh right from now Yahweh right from the creation of the world, everything he made, including the Adam, he made it a proton. <clears throat> Let me go right here to an illustration. He says that Yahweh. He says, now, now Yahweh, right from the, the creation of the world, you use it right here, right from the creation of the world, can you see? Right from the creation of the world, the creation is that creation by the pattern, right? Mm -hmm. Yahweh's abstract, does the great gear takes us human form from this state forward, that's what he creates, right? Mm -hmm. So he says that Yahweh, right from the beginning, from the creation of the world, everything he, he, everything he make, including the atom, he made it a proton. So this is a pictorial illustration. It's an atom, right? Mm -hmm. Proton, neutron, electron, three parts to an atom, one atom. Is that right? Yes. This pattern is threefold. Most holy place, holy place, court round about, three compartments, one tabernacle, right? Mm -hmm. Man is threefold. Is that right? Um, pneuma, psyche, Soma, okay? Mm -hmm. Or a spirit, soul, body, okay? Mm -hmm. You have a most holy place, holy place, court round about, right? Mm -hmm. It says you have a proton. Makes up a cell. I mean, uh, uh, um, right there, the proton, neutron, electron makes up a uh, um, proton, proton. Proton, neutron, electron makes up a, uh, an atom. The cells, nucleus, nucle nucleosis, nucleus, cell, body, cell, right? Mm -hmm. Everything is is everything is is made up or made up that way. Then there's Yahweh. Yahweh is pure spirit take on shape and form, right? Mm -hmm. Right here, so Yahweh is pure spirit, take on shape and form of Yahweh Elohim, right? So this is shapeless here, shapelessness here. Don't pay, don't pay attention to this. Well, he says, well then they're talking about the cloud that he takes on this shaking form, 
What is the shape and form? Is the attributes united in, a, in a, into an organized, into an organic body? So we have nine, use it right here, since we're here. You have nine divine attributes, right, which, which, is, which is here, okay? Which is, same, which is the same one right here in the cloud, right? Invisible, right? Mm -hmm. Nine divine attributes of Yahweh. Intelligent wisdom and knowledge, love, beauty, justice, power, foundation, and strength, right? Mm -hmm. Taste of shape and form, all right? Mm -hmm. Yahweh Elohim, okay? The attributes organized into, a, in, in, into an organic body, and that's only seen in visions, right? Mm -hmm. So then this, this or, inorganic here, this inorganic here, and, uh, and this organization here, this is one. This is two, this is three. So I'll go like right here. This is one, this is two, all right? Mm -hmm. And this is three, all right? Mm -hmm. This is one, this is two, that's three, is that right? Mm -hmm. One Yahweh, three states, two manifestations of himself, okay? Yeah. All right. He says, he says, just, just as it was most holy place, Holy place, court round about. No excuse. There you're walking around talking about Lord God Jesus Christ, and here you stand, 150 <laughs> division of Psalms. I'll write that down. 150 division of Psalms. Just write it down. It says, hold it right there, and we'll be back to where you were there. In the last verse, I'm just showing you. And when Yahweh decided to destroy man and beast off of the earth and everything, the breath of life, the breath of life, the breath of life died in that flood. All right, read 150 division in the last verse. Did you write it down? Yes. It says that everything that has breath praise Yahweh. Let everything that has breath praise Yahweh. Now somebody said that old funny name, I ain't going to do that. And here you are. You just say it all the time. But you're just so you're just too stupid to know that's that's what you're doing. There's a beast out there walking around everything that has breath. <laughs> How about that? Then somebody come along and say something about ya 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 ya. How about that? Just a message stupidity and colossal and colossal ignorance, right? Read on. For the visible things of him, for the visible things of him from the creation of the world. From the creation of the world, now get that straight. Man was created and made in the likeness and image of the Son of Yahweh, Elohim, so he wouldn't have no excuse now. You see, it's a pattern. Yahshua Messiah said, believe me, listen at what I'm saying now, believe me. He said, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Believe me for my very work's sake. We know you come from Yahweh and here's how we know. You out there at Lazarus tomb, tell them to roll the stone away and Lazarus come forth and just that is Lazarus, the whole thing. That's the power we are, we are talking about. Lazarus come forth. I'm telling you folks, we just don't. Not gonna have no excuse and Yahweh not going to accept none. But he made the devil out there Yahweh Elohim, all right, read on, Dr. Harris. For the visible things of him, for the visible things of him from the creation of the world, we want to remind you now, don't you forget it now. And I'm telling you now, the Pope can't do it. Orthodox uh, Judaism can't do it. Protestantism can't do it. Take it on back to the purpose or the, or the God here or some part of nature. Take it on back there. In creating, he come on down. He told us line upon line, precept upon precept, and line upon line, and precept upon precept, and line upon line, and precept upon precept. He can't, he can't do that in all other, he can't do that in all of the dispensation ages. He can't do that unless Yahweh be right in him. What's that, Doc? 
you you can't take your book and read it and understand all that unless I read it. <coughs> you sit tight. I'm going to show you in your Bible. These people have college education, have a degree of doctor of philosophy, master of arts, and every kind of other kind of degree you think think of. Is that right? They can't do it. Say, oh yes, you can, brother. In the Bible, answer. Answer that one. They can't do that. All right, read on. For the visible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Now you see it's not hidden Yahweh. It's right out where you can see it. It's as clear as I can see the sky. It's, it's right there. Even a woman, even the woman looking back, clearly seen, read, being understood. Now you understood by, you understand how he is by the things that he made, all right? Being understood by, by the things that are made. By the things that are made, even, say, go ahead, even his eternal power, even his eternal power as a part of nature, and as a part of nature, so that they are out with skews. Now, do you see that? Now, I, now, I, now, now, Paul is telling you, now, you just don't have no excuse. Yahweh has abolished your excuse the way he made everything. And it's my advice, and it's my advice. You don't have to let, you don't have to let one of these demonic spirits or the hypocrite preachers around telling you a whole bunch of junk. Telling you, you jump like this. Well, we don't know what's in heaven but come on up and give me your hand and we'll start on our <laughs> way tonight. Come on. <laughs> and I and I can just see somebody come on, come on up here to the altar and, and be prayed for and start on your way. Process, process, uh, prostle, is it prostitute? Prostitute. Not pronouncing it right. He wants somebody to join his junk, join his church. Now, if you can get a bunch of souls to believe, just like they have here, down here, there's quite an audience here. That's why right, talking about people out here in California, they sit down here, Holy Spirit today. But they come down here. Five, it says five, your, or you said, well, you give your life to God and how God's setting up there shedding crocodile tears <laughs> trying to get you saved <laughs> when it just when it's just to the opposite now here's here's the way it is with Yahweh he said he would laugh and mock when you when you when your fears come and you're going to heaven too and you wouldn't acknowledge the truth now you're down to it and he'll laugh at you Come right in, scared to hell. I mean, scared to death. Don't be laughing at. It. That's the truth. So if you think this is a lie, I'll read it to you. I'll read it to you. Yahweh knows you're you're going to to one way or the other. He knows what you're going to do. It's he put that. It's he that puts it in you, the will and to do. Well, somebody said, I'm on my, I'm my own free agent. I'm my own free moral agent. Well, no, that's your imagination. Finish that verse there, Dr. Harris. For the invisible things of him for the creation of the world are clearly seen, clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power is part of nature so that they are without excuse. So now, there's no excuse for, for that, just no excuse. Now look here, let me say this to you. Now, we just want to use a little horse sense now. If the, if the Catholic Church is right, or the Roman Catholic is right, or Judaism is right, all of them right, all of them ought to agree. But this is what we don't have here. We don't have nobody in Orthodox, 
a Judaism that can prove the divine authenticity, the unerring accuracy. Listen now at, at my words, the absolute infallibility of Yahweh and his eternal purpose. They just don't have it. See that now? You don't have it in Orthodox uh, uh, Judaism. You don't have it in, have it in Roman Catholicism. You don't have it in Protestantism. Now, that's why we all, listen here, ain't, he says, I am, he says, am I telling the truth? Now, you see here that Yahshua is his name. Now, now somebody says, well, now look here. Folks, I'm sick and tired of going down to that school. Every time I go down, they, they, they talking about this and that mountain story, starting with Israel and the Red Sea, through, the, through here the Red Sea in the world of 40 years and cross over the River Jordan. I'm just as sick and tired of it. Every time I go down there, I, it says I'm of that repetition. I'm sick of it. Every time you see a child born, whether it's male or female, see whatever, see, that way you go through. Are you tired of that every morning? Are you sick of it every day you get up and, and you come in and, and come on and get up and, and your belly? and you go right back to the grave. Are you sick and tired of repetition? That's what happens. Now folks, there's enough milk to get you the same way, all the way up, all the way, all down through the ages. And, and you have to follow the line, the bloodline, and, and this water line, this spirit line. You have to follow it all the way through the creation of the world. So I use it right here, the illustration. You have it right here. A couple places where you have, you said, you said, you have a bloodline, mm -hmm. right? Water line, mm -hmm. spirit line. So you have water, I mean, blood all the way through, right? Mm -hmm. Line, water line, see, spirit line. So I go, mm -hmm. you have blood, water, spirit, okay? Mm -hmm. Right here you have so blood, water, spirit. So I go, mm -hmm. it says, and if you get out of harmony, then you then you'll have then you've had it. Now let me explain this. Let me get this one over to you. Can't nobody do that but Yahweh. Me as a man, I cannot do it. I don't have a I don't I don't have sense enough. I'm not fooling with you. So you can get straightened up too. All right now. What we are saying using this about Pharaoh being overthrown in the Red Sea, you don't have no, you don't, you don't, you don't have to believe that in the book in order to find out and know about it. We know it's repetition. It's got to be repeated. Now look here, if Pharaoh was overthrown in the Red Sea, now Yahweh, when he was born or come through the loins of the woman, he had to come down to Egypt. He cannot go out of Egypt until somebody dead. It just can't be. So see that now, mm -hmm. Judas. What I what I tell you, who who died up here first? Who died up up there? Somebody says Hera. 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 That sought the young child's life. He had to die, and he couldn't live. Now here's the point. He had to die and bury just like he was buried in the Red Sea there. Judas playing the same role. He had to die and he had to be buried here. Then here comes the Messiah. He can't get away from it on account of this man here, first Adam. He was buried. So he has to do that too. But the difference is he resurrected from the dead and the other fellow didn't. Judas didn't. Here's what I'm Here's what I'm saying. The scriptures cannot be broken. Now, we can look back here and see that Pharaoh being overthrown in the Red Sea and Judas playing with that role here that Pharaoh played. And Judas has got to go out and then kill himself and he got to be buried. Now, Judas sold him out, sold Yashin aside for 30 pieces of silver because he had one of them things like to throw this out to, like to throw this out to now. Yes, they did. 
I just go ahead on down. Student body says no. And yet it was trip. And yet it was a trip down here too. I mean, I made it. You was with me, Mary Ann. He said most of you was with me right down here. And look, just like Moses told Pharaoh down there, what was going to happen to him? Did 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 we tell Sadat and the boys what's going to happen? We went up to Hussein in Jordan and told him the same thing. Went up to Israel and told them the same thing up there in Israel. And we told one, we told Sadat, here just what we what we was going to tell King Hussein. And we told King Hussein what we were going to tell go to my ear and, and them up there. Is that right? Is that what we is that what we told them? Dr. Dr. Harris said it right. Now look, folks. Now you're talking about repetition that can't. You're talking about repetition that they can't learn nothing. Ever learning and never and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now I'm looking right at this pattern. Now that's why I was talking about that when I told them what I said to them. Now here it's now here it is, they can't learn. Pharaoh done done tried it. They tried it in 1948. They tried it in 1967. They tried it in 1962. They just can't make the grade. Just can't learn it. Now here you are. You come to school. And we don't want you to be down here ever learning and never able to come to another truth, right? Now we just read that which that which maybe none of Yahweh. Yahweh was has manifested or shown it to them. For the visible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Even his eternal power is a part of nature. So that they so that there won't be no excuse. I used to wonder myself when I was a preacher in the church of God. I used to wonder to myself, why is it that we're just a be all split up in some many denominations and all like that look like to me that that God has appointed a day. I'm talking about Acts of Apostles now. So Yahweh has appointed a day when he'll judge the world of righteousness by that man whom he has ordained. It, it would seem to, to me that you write down Acts 17 chapter. Is that down? Yes, sir. It says, um, it would seem to me that there ought to be something in that Bible to put us together some kind of way or another, but if we just wasn't doing no good, and for two years of my life, that's the way I was. I couldn't see it. And finally, Yahweh revealed it to me. And that's what, I'm, that's what I've been trying to, trying to tell you. And this year, which we have come down to the close, come down so close to it, and I try my best to warn you, and in, in, in fact, you hear me say a while ago, I am not particularly concerned about the grave. And if I have my way about it, I'll be out in the cemetery by now, because I don't, because I have a desire to depart and be with Yahweh. With Yahweh, which is far better than this. That's right. When you got the real genuine thing, you don't want to sit around here fully with all this junk and stuff. That's what the Apostle Paul said. He said, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. And he knew that there was a crown laid up in him which Yahweh Elohim that righteous spirit shall give him of that day and not only him but of all of those in the Holy Spirit now then another thing he said he said there too I'm preaching a funeral I'm preaching a funeral by one time it was an, an emergency Thing. Just real quick, 
I don't have time to get to, I don't have time to get me no text and I had to run on and out there and I had to grab the Bible find me something in there I knew it a lot I knew a whole lot of text but I so I had read it sit there in the kitchen it says first Corinthians we can't invite you to read Corinthians I'm talking about what Jehovah said by man said by man come forth with Lazarus from the tomb away then the man dies and gives up the ghost but had to grab myself up a text and this was the text if in this life only we have hope in Yahshua Messiah whom the world calls Jesus Christ then we are then we are of all men most miserable now you think of yourself in, in your situation and in your position if you had if you if you had you don't have no majority of you don't have I didn't say nothing about it I'm pretty sure that the majority of you don't have no great big expensive bank account. Student body laughs. said penthouse. Out there on the hill somewhere overlooking the ocean, have a Rolls Royce in the garage. You don't have all these things. In other words, this world's goods, then you're a failure. And if and if in this life only, if you have hope in Yahshua, now you are miserable wreck this next one is coming up immortality age that's what you're supposed to have the hope in that's what we are waiting for now dr harris i want you to read one one more verse for me and that's isaiah 28 9 and 10 and you pay attention now remember what i i showed you there that from the christian the world you got one two three okay so I use, I can use, uh, I can use this right here. For the creation of the world, you yeah, have one, two, three. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you got the numbers on here, one, two, three. All right. Mm -hmm. You have to use these uh, the charts with these plates. Right? One plate, two plate, three plate, right? One, two, three. Is that right? Right. Bloodline, waterline, spirit line. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Blood, water, spirit, right? Mm -hmm. Line upon line. Is that right? Precept upon precept. Is that right? Okay. Okay. Most holy place, most holy place, holy place, court round about. Right? Yahweh Elohim Yash. Is that right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, spirit, soul, body. Right? Right. Uh, proton, neutron, electron. Is that right? Mm -hmm. All going by the pattern. And so forth and so on. It says, you got one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Same thing here, pure spirit, that's one. Incorporeal, that's two. Physical body, that's three. You see that now? You got blood on the altar. Right? You got water in the in the in the you got water in the um you got water, um, you got blood on, blood on the altar, water here in in in, in the breaking labor. You got spirit, uh, uh, no, no, they call it light into spirit, right? Into the, the holy place, through the veil, in the most holy place, one, two, three, right? And um, it says, um, and you use it all the way through, from the garden here. I'm saying it, I say from the garden here, so from the garden right here. From the garden here, I'm saying it so you can, so you can see what I'm talking about. You use, you say, use it all the way, right straight on down. Now, folks, I've got some news for you. He himself is Saint, a Saint, of Saintoriums, all right? Mm -hmm. Which you see right here. Illustration, Yahshua Messiah. It's a Saint, Saintorium of Saintoriums, all right? All right? It ain't right here, it's about right here. Omega, Alpha, Omega. Right? right, it says um, Yahshua Messiah. When John was out on the Isla of Patmos, put it over here. 
We have the same one right here, Saint John Saint Torres. John John Hill is the Papas. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Yeah. Let me put it this way. This is a brass vessel. That's a brass altar. This is a brass vessel. Brass altar. This is brass here. It's brazen labor. And then you enter into the door. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a door. Um, yeah. And you got the gold in here. These vessels of gold in here. Mm -hmm. How now his feet was was at burnished at was at burnished brass. See, right here, burnished brass. Um, what's up here? These in here are gold, and that's what that's all that's all about. That means that he's the sanctuary. All right, he's the body. All right, he's the sanctuary himself. He's the body. All right. Now that's what you're going to have to use. That's there's no way out of it. He's the archetype original pattern of the universe. It was said right up here. Elohim, the archetype original pattern of the universe, right? Mm -hmm. There just ain't no way out of it. Now here's the thing that's happened. The devil has come along and told us all kind of bare faced lies, like Lord God is Christ. And what we have at the, at the bottom now is that right? Right. What the, what the devil uses out of these. Out of these um, Hold that ministers, all right? Your imams, you understand? Or your, your priest, or your reverend, all right? Or your minister. Satan's spirit in, incarnated in them. That spirit is, is using Lord Jehovah God, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. These are all erroneous. They are all lies, all right? Mm -hmm. Concerning my Heavenly Father, the divine title in the name of the Holy Spirit or the Savior, Yahshua, okay? Is the truth up here, Yahweh El Yahshua? Lord Jehovah God, Jesus Christ, all lies erroneous, right? Mm -hmm. That's what the devil uses. He says, and if you just and if you just use a little horse sense, you can see that if Lord was the name of the Father, all right? Mm -hmm. Lord was the name of the Father, then the word or son ought, it ought to be have some relationship, and this ought to be similar. Mm -hmm. None of these names. Now, somebody would come along and call you out of your name. I mean, I mean, of your parental name that you inherited from birth. That wouldn't set you well, would it? <laughs> that's what you think of that. That's what you think of that. Read, Dr. Harris. Who shall you teach knowledge? Now, now, listen here. Who shall you teach knowledge? Who gonna? Whom Yahweh want to teach knowledge? Knowledge and wisdom shall be the, shall be the stability of time. Now, who's he going to teach knowledge? All right, read. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Now, listen. Yahshua's Messiah had doesn't even make sense. Now, who he's going to make to understand doctrine? Read them that are weaned from the milk. Now. You have to get off that milk. You have to put that bottle down, put that bottle down. There in the fifth chapter of Hebrews, write that down, fifth chapter of Hebrews. This down. Fifth chapter of Hebrews. Okay. Paul said there are the Jews who were who were supposed to have knowledge and understanding. He said, when the time comes that that um, they should be capable of teaching somebody else. They had need of somebody to give them some milk, some more milk. They wasn't weaned. All right, read on. Oh, hand him up, hand him up for him behind you. For him behind you, just hand it to me. Let me show this to call me. What's the call? Okay, just a second. Okay. It says, There in the fifth chapter of Hebrews, Paul said there are the Jews who, who were supposed to have knowledge and understanding. He said when the time come that they should be capable of teaching somebody else, they had need of somebody to give them some more milk. They wasn't weaned, all right, read on. 
them that are weaned from the milk and drawn. Now weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast, you have to grow up here sometime read on. For precept must be upon precept. It says, now, this is what I'm talking about. This bloodline must be a, must be on this bloodline. Mm -hmm. I went over there. This bloodline here. Mm -hmm. This bloodline must be upon bloodline. This water line must be upon water line. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the pattern all the way through these the dispensation of time on through here, clear on back into the beginning, back to now. You have to come up, come on up. Come on above that verse. You have to get winged some some way or another. You have to eat some meat. You have you have to quit crawling around the floor. Stand up and be a, and be a man sometime or another. Now look, folks. Now now I've tried to do this. This was this was night. This was the night when they ate the Passover down there in Egypt. Right here, like they, they, this is the night that they passed over Egypt down there by slaying of that lamb, mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. down here. Now pay attention to what I'm saying. If, if it's dark down there, and if Yahshua sight the lamb, the lamb of John, I mean, if the lamb, mm -hmm. as John said he was, that takes away the sins of the world when he's crucified out there, mm -hmm. right? You have to have the same condition right there. It turned, it got, it got dark. It's got to turn dark over the face of the earth from the from the sixth to the ninth. All right, you can see the darkness back there, can't you? The right. Back there, it's turning dark. All right, so one, so one down right there. It says, uh, "Let me get a better one." Uh, that's good. We don't have, have time, but it says. Uh, it got, it got to turn dark over the face of the earth from the sixth to the ninth hour. It's just got to do that. Now it says he can't run out. He can't run out the garden and to the light this morning. He was to wait until the sun gun come down. That's not in the outer court. It was raining here. The sun was obscured by the clouds down in Egypt. Dark, in Egypt dark. Mm -hmm. um, Yeah, down in Egypt, dark. Can't bring a lamb or any sacrifice until it's dark. It's dark here, dark here, dark here. Put it in Joseph's new tomb. Here, that's that that night of the Passover. It didn't come to effect until the day of Pentecost. And he washed the disciples' feet. That's the wash the regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. See that now. Whom shall he teach doctrine? Them that can. Draw this line upon this line, blood line. There's water line, there's spirit line. You can use it right here. Blood, water, spirit. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Blood line, water line, spirit line. And here's your assembly line. And here's the veil of the flesh. And then you got, then you go in here, and then you go into the most holy place. Okay? So the assembly line, veil of the flesh. Mm -hmm. right? And go into the most holy place. Right. Okay. Um, where the it's a, or the it's a itself. Now that's what you have to do. Now here's where here's where you have to start from. You have to start with him and hold him all the way through here, all the way through, all the way through. Look at them charts. And you'll find every last one of them. That's on there the same way. Now look, that's Yahweh's teaching you knowledge. And I've already told you and told plain, and you know I told you the truth. The Pope can't do that, or the Doc Judaism can't do that. Now then, this is what they do. Now so far, these charts, John comes and he's baptized in the River Jordan. <coughs> the River Jordan right here. That pictorial illustration right here. Okay. It says, um, John comes, he's baptized in the, river, in the River Jordan. They had to confess their sins. Now, you pay attention to what I'm saying. They had, now this is before, it says, three and a half, three and a half years before he died. All 
right? Three and a half years before Yahweh died. They baptized. It said that, it said, 33, 33 and a half, three and a half years before he died. That baptism they went to, I mean, I, I mean be, I don't mean sprinkle either. I'm talking about burying him by baptism. The sixth chapter of Romans, Dr. Harold, I want, want to let you know that this, this is the way in the Bible, sixth chapter of Romans. What shall we say then? What shall we say then? He's talking about the Jews. You have to go back up in the fifth chapter, but we, but we ain't got time. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Shall we continue in sin? He's talking about the Jews that grace may abound by no means, by no means. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not, know ye not that so many of us were baptized into the Messiah? were baptized into his death. Now John had to baptize them in the water before he died in order to baptize them in his death. I would like for you for you Gentiles to get this straight. There wasn't any Gentiles in it. And I want to let you know this too. There wasn't any Christians baptized. No Gentiles, not the first. Didn't baptize nobody but the Jews. Now, are you going to now, he said, how are you going to find about that? None of the, he said, there wasn't nobody but Jews come up out of Egypt. Okay. But nobody but Jews come out of Egypt, all right? Now, there wasn't, but no Jews, there wasn't nobody but Jews gathered up around the mount. All right. Okay, around the mount. Yeah, there was nobody but Jews gathered around around the mountain when he made the covenant with them. So, so uh, the book says. Uh, so the book says. Now look, how easy it's been for the devil to come along and fool you. If Jesus was baptized, truly Yahshua. If Yahshua was baptized, was good enough for for him enough for me. You don't hardly bother the book. There isn't anybody that use this, so they don't even read the book. Mm -hmm. When Joshua told, he said, for baby now, John, that I, that I, uh, that you baptized me. John said, I need to be baptized. I don't want to see him. They realize what Joshua was doing. Mm -hmm. at, that, at that time, at, at that moment, Joshua just had ended or fulfilled water baptism. Okay? Mm -hmm. Christianity was satanic spirit. Uh, incarnated in these in these uh, leaders, mm -hmm. religious leaders, it said that he that, that when he started water baptism, <laughs> right? See how I go? Yeah. It says, uh, um, he says, don't he says, there is no there isn't anybody in this room that hasn't been baptized. Adam was baptized. In Mother Earth, in in its formation. That's right. Mm -hmm. There's a child or a fetus in the womb that in that that's in the bag of water with the uh, you have it right here. See, the child, right? Mm -hmm. The bag of water. Is that right? That's right. All right. It says um, There's a child or a fetus in the womb that's in the bag of water with the, he says, over. The, the child is immersed in water there in his mother's womb, just like Adam was when he come from Mother Earth back here. Everybody, me, yes, you said, well, I had a, a, a cesarean operation. Now look, now follow me now, follow me now, look here. You see this, here's the body, and here, here's the body, and here, and here is coming on down up here too. It's all been true. It's come on down to you. Now listen folks, now before that child is born, that water has to break. Mm -hmm. Then there's going to be a show of blood moves on out of the way. Now there's a doctor sitting up here, Dr. Harris I'm talking about. I, I asked him to give a lecture on childbirth when he first come in school and he couldn't understand why at that time I asked him to do a thing like that. Uh, sure, sure people religious. 
But now as he got through, as he got through it, I got back up and I and I tell you when then he understood it. He said, everybody now, Yahweh has fixed it this way, so we don't have no excuse. And you have to put that line upon that line there, line upon line, precept upon precept. You have to do it all the way on to the spiral nature, clear on back to the Garden of Eden. All right? Mm -hmm. Clear on back to Yahweh, clear on back to the Garden of Eden, type of shadow. All right? Mm -hmm. That's the way it is. That's, that's the way it has to be. And you find that, and you can't find Roman, Roman Catholic and Protestants and Jews to do that. I couldn't do it, so don't give me no praise for it. If Yahweh had revealed it to me, I'll just, I'll be just like any other man. I don't have a thing to boast about, Freddie. If you read what I'm, I'm, if you read what I, what I'm taught and make some e examination of it, find out for yourself. Dr. Freddie Allen says, right. He said, you did better than I did because I didn't have nobody to show me nothing but Yahweh. If Yahweh hadn't showed me, I wouldn't have known. I couldn't manifest things, these I couldn't manifest these like this. And listen there, ain't a thing you can do about it now. They were they were they was baptized with death. Three and a half years before he died. Now here's what I, I want to get over to you. If John baptized them before he died and didn't didn't bath, didn't baptize nobody but Jews, now listen to what I'm gonna say. Now, wouldn't it be stupid in Yahshua? The Messiah to die out here on the cross. If water baptism, what, what, if, if water baptism washed away their sins, and the River Jordan come, come on down. And the River Jordan come on down from, from the Sea of Galilee, mm -hmm. or the Sea of Nazareth, enter to the Salt Sea or the Dead Sea. If that be true water and wash away sin. Baptism should have been in the Dead Sea. Is that right? Right. Water down, water down, wash, water down, wash away sin. Then here's Yahshua dying on the cross for their sins in the water, in the water wash. Now that's stupid for him dying out there like that. You have to admit that. Say, listen, that's the only sacrifice that Yahweh ever had to remove anybody's sin. The blood of bulls and goats and heifers and turtle doves, nothing like that, they never did. And water never washed away nobody's sins. If you had a little soap, a little detergent, it don't, it don't touch the conscience. That's what I'm talking about. You have to have something to touch the conscience there. So now the book says, truly, if we walk in the light, if we walk in the light and he is, and he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the water says no. Wash away sins. No. We need straighten. First John 1 and 7. But if he walk in the light, and he is the light, and he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Yahshua Messiah, his son, cleanses, cleanses us from all sin. Now see, if this other passage, you're, you're going to read something like those in Revelation 1 and 3. It's going to read something like this, Revelation 1 and 6. And from Yahshua the Messiah, who was the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Now, you can see that, that water didn't wash away nothing. <clears throat> now look, boys, the pattern dictates this. Don't you see the blood down here in Egypt? He said, now, don't you see the blood down here in Egypt? That the lamb right here, right? Mm -hmm. It appears the lamb on the side, draining the blood of the lamb and, and draining that blood. All the lamb put that lamb, put that blood in the basin, right? right. So it strike the door post, the inside of the house, right? Two side posts, double uh, upper door posts and stick it in the basin, right? Right. The blood down here in Egypt is talking referring to, right? He said, don't you see the blood out here hanging? Don't you, don't, don't you see the blood here going to dip in the blood? 
sacrifice and then in then in the water. Okay? Mm -hmm. Don't you see that then? Can't you see there's got to be a death here? Got to be some blood. Mm -hmm. You want to shed the blood as, as the Hebrew said. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. He had to die. If water had washed it away, as they're trying to tell us, as the preacher, as the preacher sitting here in his pulpit will say, and most of them, it ain't, they come confessing Christ too. Till your water baptism washed away your filthy sin. <laughs> well then, if that be the case, what about this? He says, so it came sin when a baby in sin did his mother conceive him and and they were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Don't you go put that stuff on us over here now. No, don't anybody like that. Paul said, then your children now, they are clean. That's the second chapter of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. It says, now I, now I have said enough. Is there any question? Now I brought a bunch of books down here. I'd like for you to take this book right here, Jehovah Witness, and get that name, Jehovah there. Now while you're now now while you find that, I want to show you what they say and it's a disgrace too. Now that's their book. Get over there and read, see what I'm what I'm telling them, that's right. That's the reason them books. It says copyright. 1969-1971 by the Watchtower Bible and, and Tract Society of Pennsylvania and Dr. Kelly says, now read. It says, Jehovah, the personal God of, the personal name of God. <laughs> Isaiah 42 and 8, Isaiah 54 and 5. It says, through scripturally uh, designated by, the, by such descriptive titles as God, Lord, Creator, Father, the Almighty, the Most High, and others, His personality and attributes. Who and what is, who and what He is are fully summed up and expressed only in this personal name. The correct pronunciation of the divine name Jehovah is the best known English pronunciation of the divine name. Although Yahweh is favored by most Hebrew scholars. He said, now that's, now that's a disgrace. You know that? That's a disgrace. Now, Yahshua Messiah said, Moses wrote of him, Moses wrote Yahweh. Now, he said Jehovah is an English translation. No, it's, no it is not. Yahweh is a, tra is a translation. That's an English translation. So what he referred to is this right here. So you have, so Yahweh, Right here, mm -hmm. this is the English translation, all right, okay. of the Tetragrammaton, all right, okay. the four, four consonants that the Hebrew, that, that's how the Hebrews write their, have, have write their letters, all right. Mm -hmm. This is Yahweh in English, okay. Mm -hmm. This Jehovah down here, which is erroneous, which is a lie, right, which is error, is that right? Right. Lord, error, erroneous, God, error, erroneous, erroneous, Jesus, a lie, erroneous, Christ, a lie, erroneous, right? Right. Okay, it says now. So Yahweh is a, is, a, is a translation, that's the English translation, so Yahweh is an English translation right here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the English translation. Now, it's a disgrace to say anything like that. Read a little further, Doc. The oldest Hebrew manuscript present present the name in the four, in the in the form of four consonants, uh, commonly called tetragrammaton, right? Mm -hmm. So right here. We have one here, Tetragrammaton. See, 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 see how the power and divine being revelation? Yeah. You just trap that bass and catch that bass with all kind of lies. Is that right? Mm -hmm. See, Tetragrammaton is this right here. Y Y A W H, right? Or in, in, in the consonants that they use in the they translate into English is Y A W H, right? Okay. Tet Tetragrammaton in English. Okay. Mm -hmm. It says the old Hebrew manuscripts. Present the name in the form of four consonants commonly called the tetragrammaton from Greek tetra, meaning four, and gramma letter. These four letters written from right to left, see? Mm -hmm. From right to left, we, we, we read from or right from 
left to right, they write from right to left, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah, these four letters written from right to left are is given it gives the Hebrew and may be translated into the English as Y H C W H. Now you see that you deny it, then turn around and said they translated in English. Now wouldn't that now wouldn't that bust up? Now that's now that's downright unapologetic stupidity. There's no excuse for nothing like that. And as stupid as I am, I know better than that. All right, read on, Doc. The Hebrew consonants of the name are therefore known. The question is, now this is a question with them, as to which vowels are to be combined with those consonants, vowel points. Did vowel points did not come in, into use in Hebrew, in Hebrew until the second half of the first millennium. Christian era. Say, see that now? That say, which is the first vowel to use, right? So we have right here, vowel, right? Okay. A E I O U sometimes Y, right here, right? <laughs> is that right? You say that's that's the vowels. Now keep close because we're going to read vowels in this Y H W H. And it says, and don't know which one to use. Now that's just downright stupid and here's the reason now he's going to say Jehovah Jehovah right mm -hmm. now you got the E here so you got the E here mm -hmm. right and the A over here now you got the woman before the man now if you put the A where it belongs as an Adam right here right mm -hmm. and the E being E put the A for Adam put it right here because the man was formed first, then take the E, the E, and then take Eve and put it right here, right? Mm -hmm. The E here, and that's the vowels, A and E, right? Mm -hmm. Now he don't know which way to use it, and we do because we know the man was created first. Then the woman was created in the man. See how smart we are? Now let's take some, some, some more. Now you got Adam and Eve. Now the woman was in the man. It says uh, uh, E-U or e -way. What's that spell? Say e -way. Uh, e -way or e -wool. What's an e -wool? It says a female lamb. That's a female lamb. <laughs> female <laughs> lamb. <laughs> That's a female lamb. Stubai said right. said now look, that female lamb was in that man here. Stubai said right. It says form there. Yahweh called their right. That's, Yahweh called their name Adam. Right, that's in, that's in Genesis fifth chapter. Uh huh. Uh huh. He said Yahweh called their name Adam, and the woman was taken out of the man. You see how smart we are? We don't get caught up on no mess like that. Now that's now that's perfectly clear. Then you got the nerve. I'll tell you the truth. That was just the other day when the man speaking, Dr. Durnham from the Bible Institute. I told him. He said, Now, Dr. Kelly. I tried to tell you something about the truth. He said, no, I'm not going to feel good tonight. He said, Jehovah God, that's what we that's what we lecture. We are here to tell you the truth. I said, well, if you say you are here to tell the truth, <laughs> demonstrate it. Yeah, demonstrate it. He said, I see he said, I see you got quite a extensive library there too. And I said, yes, we got. They seen some of their books in there too. They knew I had them. So I said, just say that. You just read it. Now at, at the reading, at the reading that the Hebrews use, read it again, Doc. Jehovah is the best known English pronunciation of the divine name. See that? Although Yahweh. See, I wouldn't write nothing like that. I would be ashamed to go in front of, of intelligent people and stand and tell them a bare face lie like that, that they could look up in any book. I got a I got a gang of books here, certain recently written too. How how would you look? How would you look? How would you look going up in somebody, up in somebody's, and telling Jehovah's English pro, uh, pronunciation when the that's the English pronunciation up there Yahweh. See?
anybody can find out about that. I wouldn't disgrace myself running around telling people a lie like that. And the looking like he's telling you something about the truth. That's disgusting. And once he found out, he said, I have searched out. People are, are not talking like that. Yeah, you better. He said, well, now, time is short. We, we have just about a minute or two before it's time to go home. Does anybody got any questions? Come on now, you ought to have some. Well, this sure is a wonderful, well, this sure is wonderful that I can so that I explain everything so satisfactory that everybody don't have no questions to ask. I know when Yahweh showed me the vision, all I had was a great big. So the whole thing too, I saw and then he had to knock me out again and then show it to me again. Now, and then I understood, but I want to tell you something, folks. If ever you get it, get in your heart and your mind the way that I pictured and illustrated around here, this, around here, this here. If you if you do, you could you couldn't pay me if you wanted to. Yes, indeed. You know I'll tell you, I think. He said, you ring the bell on me. I'll tell you something about 36. After I had that vision in 1931, in 1936, I went to Cincinnati. Okay, I'll tell you, I'll tell you something about 19, 19, 1936. I had a vision in 1931. In 1936, I went to Cincinnati, Ohio. I lived in Springfield and I went to Cincinnati. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is what I saw definitely. And I just wanted to keep my mouth shut and I was doing all right to Sister Harris comments, but I, but I would go back to Springfield. And when I went back to Springfield, Dr. Gross, Dr. Gross and Dr. Barbie and all, the rest of them, they went home and sat down. What's the matter with you? She said, well, there ain't nowhere for us to go. There ain't but a handful of us said, there just ain't nowhere, there just ain't nowhere to go. You, you just can't go back into that stuff out there no more. The other day when he tried to tell them what the school was, he came out of, came out, he came out of that he couldn't go back to that school. Now, oh yes. You ain't going to catch me repeating that stuff. You folks can't fool me. We said, yes, we did. You better come up here. He'll come. I'll come up here. He knows better than to come up here. All he has to do is apologize. All he has to do is an apology to be friends. Now, I'm telling you something. All you got to do, all you got to do to be friends say, you know, I know Kelly. He ain't coming up here. So he says, I'm going to prove it to you. You're going to come. He has he has time to make three or four times, you know, and sit up there three or three or four times, same lies. He invites me up. All, all of East Springfield come with me. And for about a minute, it seemed difficult. There was nothing else I could do with it. And we were supposed to have 15 minutes of peace. He and his wife and all, they were against me. So when I got down and told them, just like I showed you these particulars this, this same way, showed on the veil or on the figure somebody else want to have something to say. Now, they met last night, so I just, it says a debate. They, they wouldn't, it said they wouldn't it. Let me he said, let me tell you something, folks. These preachers out here, they know the true names. Hmm. And they'll tell you to your face that they do. And if you're wise, you you just like I just read to you and had read to you out of this book, they tell them their own selves. They tell them their own self now. They said that the Hebrew pronunciation of it was Yahweh. Is that what they said? Now that's your whole witness on book. Now look, look here. Now let me show you that Yahshua Messiah said, Moses wrote of me. Now later, now later on, right out here in Greek, now that set that sets the to preaching. Now if you take this Y 
H, W, H, and put the diagraphical marks in it, then you have the correct pronunciation of it. Is that right, David? Dr. David Rosen said that's right. Do you see that now, folks? The best thing to do is, now the reason why I'm saying this to you, time is short. This age here from the, from, from the creation of the garden down, here just, uh, just called an age, so it, says, so it says, this age from the garden, from the creation of the garden, mm -hmm. okay, down here, just called an age was 1656 years, which is right here, 1656 years, right? Mm -hmm. And Yahweh called that age, right? And from the and from down to the crucifixion, all right, and and the point and the point of the Holy Spirit, that's another age. It says 23. Now this one was short, 1656. An age is approximately 2,000 years, but 1656, that's less than 2,000. That's not quite 2,000. Now this one is over. This one is a long, this mm -hmm. one right here, 2377. It's a long age, it's a short age. This, this age is longer, longer than this age here, all right? Then as Joshua said in 24th chapter, th then this age here that we're in now, this has got to be a short because if it was not shortened, is that what it says uh, there in 24th chapter of Matthew reading somebody? Now, if it was not short, then there wouldn't be no flex save. Now, you could look all over the world and see the shape of where we're in now, and we get these people. We cannot, we cannot get these people to use these right names, mm -hmm. even Jews themselves that know that the names are that way. They won't use them. You know what they call Yahweh? They know Yahweh's the correct name. They call him Adonai. You know what they call Yahshua? They call him Yeshua. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and know that is Yahshua. See how it go? Mm. Now, that, now that to prove that to you, A.B. Trainer wrote these books. Those of you that have, I need to tell you this every once in a while, will tell you to do this. Remind these people to read the preface in your holy name Bible. Reads, that's beautiful. That's right. And and it might do them a whole lot of good on where these names in where all these names in are all coming from, what is the correct name? Now as you found over here in Yahshua Messiah, John, you got your finger on it, just go ahead and read Matthew twenty four chapter about about was uh he said there is is it's in John where he said that Rose, that Moses wrote of him, 47, said John 5, 43. Yes, John 5, 43. Now listen, folks. Now pay attention to me this treat. Now, Yahshua the Messiah is the Savior that, that was back there with Moses. All right? Mm -hmm. Back there with Moses, that Yahshua was sort of none. Right? Said Moses wrote of me now then, and Luke, he begins with Moses. Why did he begin with Moses? Why didn't he begin with somebody else? Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob, or Enoch, or somebody else back there? Well, why didn't he? Because they didn't write anything of him. So why didn't they write anything about him? Well, here's the reason why. They didn't write anything about him. You have to come on back here. He had to come back here. He never showed it to nobody else. No, he didn't. He had showed it to, he had showed it to some of the rest of them then, some of the rest of them could have written. Now that's why he began with Moses, and then to the rest of the prop of the prophecy. Is that right? And listen, folks, it was you think about this now from the Garden of Eden. All right, Garden of Eden, mm -hmm. 1656 years here. Now nobody back there actually knew his name, and comes on down about 857 870 years after the flood. And then we build the name of Moses. Right here at the burning bush, we understand that. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, then there's a whole age gone, and here's 857 years after the flood when he builds the name of Moses. 
they knew him as El Shaddai back here, which means all my body. You find that out in, in uh, Exodus, the sixth, the sixth chapter, right? Exodus 63. Um, yeah, El Shaddai means Almighty Provider. What he did provide in heaven and earth provided everything. All the necessary, all the necessary provisions was made to carry out his purpose and his plan. And now, if that be the case, now when Moses was the one that he filled the name to, so it was Moses that wrote of him. Now we're talking about the Hebrews. Where, well, Moses was the only man who who could write. Then why? You run out to the Greek for it. You get what I'm talking about? The whole thing was, was, was revealed to the Jews. Then why run out to the Greeks? You see, people, the devil is going to do anything he can to get you to believe some kind of way or another. You see that now? He's going to do that. Then here's another one. Here, here's, here's a tough one. You know I'm you know I tried to bring it in, bring it in hard to you. Look back here over here in Genesis. You got Yahweh wrote, wrote all back. You got Yahweh wrote all back over there in Genesis. Is that right? Moses Moses' name is not in the Genesis. You couldn't even prove that. You didn't know as we knew. You couldn't even prove that Moses wrote the Genesis. Now, how you going to prove that he wrote it well? There's a caption up there on the top part of the page. That's that's the, of the, of the top of the page says the first book of Moses, commonly called the Genesis. That don't prove it. That don't prove nothing. Now here's how you prove it: that Moses wrote it. Since you have Yahweh all back here in Genesis, nobody else but Moses knew anything about what his name was. Now that's a dead giveaway right there. How about that? See how smart we are down here? You say, well, that Moses was the only one that knew anything on how the name get back over here in Genesis. Evidently, Adam must have known something about it. So then, what are you, what are you, what are you going to do? Argue with Yahweh? He said, Exodus, they didn't know his name. Now, you want to dispute with me? Now, you see the point? Every time you turn, we got you, we got you your water on and it's called we do know what we're talking about and we don't have no apologies to make for telling you the truth and you must abide by it I'll put it this way Yasuma side he, he said now listen to what I'm saying he said when he come through the loins he said he, he fulfilled Protestantism and Roman Catholicism and Judaism and all them things they say he come to the institute in, in the two war, in, in, in the two what? A Christian water baptism. It said Old Testament is fulfilled, right? Mm -hmm. Carnal ordinances fulfilled, right? Now to his cross, you got on here water baptism up there, okay? So he fulfilled. The religious world said that he he come to institute on the side of the cross, all right? Mm -hmm. Is it to what? Christian water baptism, Christian foot washing, or or hard shell baptism? A primitive Baptist and instituted the, the Lord's Supper. No such a thing. Now you, you now you disputed him. He said he come to fulfill. When he come to the loins of the Virgin Mary, they said he come to institute. Now you can't be saved on nothing like that. So you can't be saved on the Lord, on so-called Lord's Supper or Passover okay. feast, right? That's right. You can't be saved on on physical water baptism. All right. Okay. You try to keep the Ten Commandment laws and these different ceremonies, and you try to keep the Sabbath day, all right? Mm -hmm. You can be saved like that. I mean, your soul on the side of the cross, right? It's invalid, all right? It says, now you can't be saved on nothing like that, running around arguing with, with arguing what's the faith, telling the what he's talking about. You don't know why he did these things. It says, thank you. He walked disciples' feet. And, and they said foot wash, and you see foot wash with the back there under the law. Mm -hmm. Just as stupid as they can be. Moses took Aaron and laid them in the body to labor and wash them. All right? Wash them like they labor. It's to illustration. All right? And is that what 
Is that what is in the book? And put the garments on them, anointed them with oil before they could officiate in the sanctuary. Like when oil wiped right? Okay. And to be washed and, and, and anointed to officiate in, in the sanctuary. All right, it's tabernacle, right? It said Moses was in there, walk in, servant. Don't you see he got to put some water in the basin after, after, after the cup of the blood? I mean, after. I mean, after take water and wash their feet back here, he is the word. So that, so that, so that is the washing of, of regeneration by the word. He told them, if I don't wash you, you can't be clean. Is that right? There's no part of it. Now I hope you got something out of this. Now, why don't you do this? All these questions that you have. All these questions that you have all your life, why don't you bring them, bring them on up here, tie somebody up and mess somebody all up? And if you don't think you can do it, bring your pastor, bring them packing down. You don't have to worry about me giving him an opportunity. We'll give him an opportunity, won't we, folks? Somebody said, yes, we will. Yes, indeed. And more than likely, he won't be back because we definitely would give him an opportunity. And we, I'll set him straight about it. He just can't do that. Put it line upon line, see? Put line upon line, right? Okay. Precept upon precept. Hold the blood line, see? Hold the blood line. Hold the water line by the pattern. Blood, water, spirit. Blood, water. Right, cup of anointing oil represents spirit, water representing the water and the blood. See, hold that blood line, water line, go by the pattern through them all. It says, upon nature, on down, or for it, on down, on through the dispensation ages, and on back to the back to the way. So it means from, 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 from like this, mm -hmm. coming on down. They take it all the way back up. See how it go? Mm -hmm. All right. It says all the way down to the dissertation ages. All right. This a dissertation chart all the way down, all the way through. And back. All right. He says, there ain't a man in the world that can do it except Yahweh be within him. Now, I've just given it to you straight. And this, and this. I want you to know too. He didn't have a whole lot of people to go out and preach the gospel. He had only 12 men to avail to evangelize the world. We got more than that right here in one almost on this street. But they just don't know what they're talking about downtown today. And man down there. Ya 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 ya. Hey brother, every time we went down there. He down there proselyting, a prosel, prosel, proselyting some somewhere or or down, and that's the way you all try to get somebody and keep the thing going the best you can. The pastor, he has to work so he can make his car payments and pay for his car, and all and all the time. That's not what it's all about. And then he's got to try to build it up some kind of way. Now, you may not like what I've said here, but I have told you the truth. And then somebody out there and say that he thinks he's so smart. No, I don't. I know it. <laughs> Two bodies clap. That's the end of this lecture <laughs> titled Jehovah and Other Ammonia Doctrines. Let's get my Dr. Killing on November 20th, 1974, not in Los Angeles, California. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Um, I have my, my Bible right there, right on the other side of my hat. Right on the other side of the hat. Right there, yeah. All right. That will include another uh, lecture given by uh, the Omaha Class College Meetings. Uh, have any comments? I'll praise God, you the Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, so um, to get the, um,
I will say the history and the background of, of the organization, of the entire organization, you go to the, our website uh, of, the, of the organization, which you go to www.idmr.net to get the history and background of the organization for yourself, okay? And um, we, uh, we, invite, we invite you to come study with us. Our class uh, days and times are Wednesdays and Fridays from, from uh, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and on Sundays from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Also, um, to, um, to contact us by email, our email address is yashua47 at gmail.com. Once again, Yashua spelled Y-A-H-S-H-U-A -H at 47, excuse me. Once again, our email address is Yashua47 at gmail.com. Once again, Yashua spelled Y-A-H-S-H-U-A 47 at gmail.com. Um, our phone number for, for further contact information, you dial Stefan Williams, the area code 402-973-897, or Rapunzel Williams, the area code 402-609-6588. You either leave us uh, a contact information by email or by voicemail. If y'all would put your heart and mind to, to uh, come and study with us, leave a detailed message with day, the day of uh, class you'd like to attend, right? Like I say, either by email or by uh, voicemail, all right? Yes. And um, we upload videos after every class. You can find our videos on YouTube or YouTube search for the idea of our Omaha. That's Joshua side, the leading directing guide to what video that he will have you to watch, all right? And I also like to promote other other uh, classes of the IDMR to upload their videos after every class. You put an IDMR, Oceanside, IDMR Syracuse, IDMR Spanish Town, Jamaica, IDMR Artport, IDMR Ontario, IDMR Southfield, IDMR Springfield, IDMR Albuquerque, IDMR Northside Chicago, IDMR Tampa, IDMR Meridian, IDMR Lansing. There's another class that upload their videos after their class, but you do not put an IDMR before their name. You go to YouTube, so you put a Memphis side class, okay? I'd like to promote five websites. The first website is AI, Asher, AI .org. AI spelled A-Y-A-H, you put space, Asher spelled A-S-H-E-R, put another space for AI, A-Y-A-H. Dot org, Aya, Asher, Aya. Second one is www.plim.org. Third one is www.eliyah.com. The, um, the fourth one is Yashua's Giving Glory. Yashua is spelled Y A H S H U A N S, Giving Glory. Yashua's Giving Glory. And the fifth one is all things scriptures, all right? Mm -hmm. And I'd like to uh, promote uh, a um, live conference calls, um, which were given by the Meridian Mississippi class, live conference calls. Their phone number to engage in live conference calls, phone number is 1-712-770-4700. You put in 676 one, two, three, hashtag. And for previous recorded conference calls, you dial 1-712-770-4709. You put in 676-123 hashtag, all right? Yes. May Yahweh uh, bless you in your, uh, in your endeavors. So that will conclude another lecture given by the Omaha Class College Meetings. Let's all stand for the doxology. Doxology can be found in the book of Jude, out of your King James Version of the Bible, the book of Jude, spelled J-U-D-E, verse 24 and verse 25, from the Holy Name Bible. It would be the book of Judah, truly Judah, but it's spelled J-U-D-A-H, verses 24, verse 25. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you fallen for the presence of his joy with exceeding joy. 
to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua, our Sovereign, belong in glory and majesty, dominion and power, both for all time, now and ever. Let's all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.